Hello and welcome to Learning TV. In today's episode, I'll be going through the map creator mode in Totally Accurate Battle Simulators and my thoughts on it. I hope you enjoy. So, if you haven't heard recently, there's been an update to tabs and it has added the map creator. So, I will go and show you around what you can do in the map creator, give my thoughts on it, and some tips on what to do. So, let's get into it. So, we'll start by creating a new map. And now you can choose what type of map you want. We'll just go with a normal medieval map. Also on each visual theme there is also one custom pre-built map which you can use if you just want to go and mess around with it. So we'll be jumping into a large template. Firstly we have the movement keys. So to move around it is Wasad. And if you want to go up or down uh, you can either press, press spacebar to go up or control to go down. So now let's get into it. So the first mode we will be covering is the place mode. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen uh, you can see the different modes and you can also see different blocks which I can place down. So the way you can place a block down is by going and pressing E on your keyboard and then after you've selected which one you want and then if you want to place it down you press left click if you want to rotate it this is either Q or E depending on which way you want to rotate it also if you want to get rid of one of these blocks you can go click on it and right click on it to delete it. Also something very useful here is if you press B it will bring up this menu here with all the different blocks assorted not just randomly put in there. So if you're looking for something in particular like a bridge for instance you could go find the bridges section and then find the bridge you want. Also there are special visual effects and tools so say for instance you wanted some sort of like fire in the middle of uh, your world you could just go above the fire and choose what type of fire you wanted so say for instance we wanted to add a fire vortex we could just click that and then place it wherever we want in the world so now are we going on to the second one utility it's not much you can really do in here it's just randomly grabbing things and if you uh, you can drag them along making huge rows of them if you want and that's really about it also you can drag things in a certain area so if you want to make a huge wall of fire here you can um, select everything in that area and do the exact same thing now one of the most interesting tools we have sculpt mode and this will be when you are creating your terrain in the world so you have different options depending on how you want it to look so uh, you, you've got things like circles and squares so we'll start off by placing some basic squares here so you can place things by left clicking or if you want to delete things you can right click and that will delete um, any sort of block area in there. Also there's a very useful tool uh, which allows you to sort of smooth out the world so say for instance I was to make something which I want to look like a sort of clip but this doesn't look very smooth it looks quite jagged so by pressing the middle button you can smooth things out and make it look more realistic by smoothing it out and sort of making it blend in with the environments. Also, I'll give you a quick tip here. If you are trying to sort of make like a jagged mountainside, then doing something like just building upwards won't make it look very interesting like this. It's not the most interesting thing to look at. So what you should do is smooth it all out and then once you've smoothed it out go into this 
staircase uh, item and then place them along here and it makes it look like a sort of rocky cliff face with all the jagged points. This can make things like cliffs or rocky mountains look um, nicer, where they can swing mountain. Uh, you can just uh, smooth it out by pressing the middle mouse button. So that is the basics of the sculpt method and now into the final method, the mayhem method. So uh, as they suggest this is for casual people just planning to mess around. So you can go into there by pressing 4 and so the first one is the erase one and it's pretty simple, it just erases things. There's not much interest in it for it to do. And as for the second one, it is the paint tool. So you can paint the landscape around and say for instance you wanted some area to look uh, black or grey, you can just paint out with grey. Or if you want to have like you accidentally did a bit too much, you can go and by pressing the right um, right clicking it, you can turn it green, green and left click turns it grey. And um, by middle clicking you can uh, turn it yellowish. So there's also the um, sort of adding trees way, it's the second one. And by just going and clicking around you can add some trees. If you want to delete them you can right click and by pressing E you can see the different types of trees. You can also get these by going into the place section pressing B and then going into the foliage and then you have a bit more options uh, than in the mayhem section but still a good way if you want to quickly add a forest without having to uh, place everything in yourself. So the fourth tool is the lightning boss this is quite um, similar to the meteor one it just you can go and hit it and it builds small holes if you uh, press the left click it builds even small holes for you so the um, I mean right click builds smaller so left click is powerful and the right click is less powerful similar thing can be said to the meteors which basically do the same thing whereas on this one right click does a lot of meteors at once making more damage. Now we will move on to the earthquake section and what the earthquake section does is that if you want to you can make holes in your wells so by left clicking it makes small holes by right clicking it will make much larger holes. This can be if you're trying to make some sort of like trying not to fall in the water world. Now the next one and probably the one you'd uh, do most if you are not messing around would be the volcano mode. And what the volcano mode do is as it suggests when you click it it adds a volcano with all the realistic smoke and lava effects coming out. Also, if you want to, you can turn the volcano so it's camouflaged in here. So if you're too lazy to build a hill in sculpture mode, you can do it like this. So after volcano, there is rain, and that's quite similar to, say, for instance, going in sculpture mode and then uh, middle mousing. It smooths uh, the world out, but with rain, it can also erode the world away so if you start putting loads of rain it will start sort of making small holes in the world and just eroding it out instead of smoothing it out. So the next is the uh, balloon and it's just like throwing away individual items uh, so it's basically the lead tool and then once you grab them they go and fly off like that. It's uh, quite fun if you're just wanting to go and mess around in the world but it's much easier just to press the delete button if you want to make a proper map so normally you wouldn't use this 
Next up is the magnetizing thing. So if you left click, you can push objects away. So say for instance, you wanted like a main battle round, but there was already loads of trees in this battle round you wanted at the center. You could go and press the magnet button and you can move this away. Or if you want to drag them closer, right click and then you can grab loads of stuff and make some uh, very interesting shapes uh, like this. And finally there is the um, time of day cycle which I personally use the most when mapping out the mayhem section. So just by clicking the left click you can change the time of day so if you wanted a spooky sort of theme you can put it to nice or you could make it early morning or midday so whatever you your own sort of theme for the map is you can do uh, it with the light time mode so now what I will do is I'll show you how to make a fairly basic sort of landscape so if you do want to save this map you can press tab and there'll be a few options say for instance you want to undo something or redo something as you undid it, the shortcuts up for that Ctrl C and Ctrl Y, the start menu, which is just like the main menu, or you could save it, which is what uh, you could do if you want to. And also, if you want to play the map, you press P, and then you can play the map in a real sort of like style. So, if you want to try and say, for instance, do some battles on it, see like what they'll be like you can and also if you want to return you can press this sort of a uh, shovel and hammer button to go back to the map editor so now let's get into uh, a proper map so you can choose whatever style you want i'll be showing you how to make a basic sort of landscape so on most maps you'd have sort of mountainy areas around the edges so we'll be putting in the landscape first so what I would normally do is add these big logs to make the basic landscape of how it's going to go and then I'll add the sort of different style of blocks later to like add the detail so we'll just outline the map here and we will go and then once we've done this we can just check if there's any gaps say for instance here we can fill that in and then we'll start doing a lower layer around the inside this will be where uh, the mountain starts rising up and we'll put a outer layer on the outside so if you have done this a little bit too much you can just uh, remove it and then once um, uh, you have sort of added the different lens like over here what you can do if you want to smooth it out just smooth it out and then we will go and add the jaggedness in later as you don't want to be working around like really jagged and stuff just in case like when we're actually doing this sort of building we want to do a bit more sculpturing we accidentally smooth it out so now that we've done some basic layers what we'll do is that we can say for instance go to our smoothed out passing if you want to keep it smoothed out that's fine just keep it or you could sort of add the clip face in then once you've done that you can continue uh, either making the back or if you finish that before you can start in the front also a uh, good idea for you to do in the sort of middle section is get these uh, small logs like these sort of this shape ones and just add little bumps in it to make it sort of uneven or otherwise you don't want perfectly flat ground and you could also say for instance make some little bumps here just add some little like I'll sort of make the uh, ground feel uneven so like it's more realistic as you wouldn't normally expect to find perfectly flat ground in like a normal like, environment so by making it imperfect you're actually making it better than making just completely flat lines 
So now that we've made a general basic landscape, we can go and start adding in some nature. So go into the Mayhem mode and click if you want to re uh, paint some fit say for instance you want to do like some parts to be just some pure uh, dirt so you can do that then you go into the tree mode and add the parts where you want forest say for instance on top of the mountains would be a good area to put forest as uh, we don't really want people sort of trying to climb over uh, the mountains and just jump into like uh, the void beyond so once you've done that you can start say for instance if you want things to keep you interested like in the background you could add some volcanoes in the background so also make it harder for people to escape the map but if you don't want to you can just not do it and now once you've done that you can go and start adding in sort of the scenery in the center so first you want to decide whether you want some sort of building so you go to buildings and then you choose uh, which one. So say for instance I wanted a temple, I could just go and add a temple in here. Then we would go and add some other like sort of uh, architecture or stuff to around it. So you could add like some pillars here, sort of just like going around the uh, building. Then if you uh, want to keep them going you can make some sort of like walls around it. So say for instance we wanted this wall to go between all the pillars, we can just go and plop that in there. And once we have uh, done as much as we want in terms of like buildings, we can go into the finer detail which is things like going into these props section or landscape if you want say add some rocks in on the background like that it helps with cliffs as well and it rocks you go into drops and then you can add sorts of things say for instance I uh, wanted some pottery outside of our buildings we could add like some sorts of like jugs and then we'd go and put them in and it's the sorts of things that you would just like it's the detail which really makes it so you could add like sort of a pot in there or some sort of like uh, I don't know like sword hanging off one of these walls and maybe even place down some statues if you go into architecture mode around the place then uh, once you've added all the detail you want uh, this will take quite a long time for around the buildings you then have to add detail around the rest of the world so some good ways are adding some rocks like that we could it's also good to add smaller rocks or big rocks as it's really the detail which counts just plot them all around the world all these different types of rocks and then just try and keep like lots of natural variation so you don't keep on seeing one sort of type of rock keep on sort of like re-angling them or switching them out for different types of uh, rock so just keep on like doing that make it look fairly like natural like you would see in real life keep on changing the different rock types and all that stuff then once you have like natural enough looking ground if you want to go any further uh, you can then start adding some foliage which is in the foliage tab like adding small bushes around the place so I could add like little bush on top of here and then like change it out for a different type something like you want to keep the variation going but you don't want to over variate it so you don't want like some sort of like a uh, tree you'd see in the middle of a sort of like spooky fiend world in the middle of just like some sort of pirate world it wouldn't really mix well it would sort of like stand out so you want to keep everything sort of like if you look at it you wouldn't notice that immediately it would sort of just be blended in in the background so keep on adding different stuff if you want to you can also add some 
uh, trees as well in here and uh, different types of trees so like say for instance we could add some certain types of trees which are like you don't see much in the area so say for instance there are many of like these sorts of like curved trees or big trees in this world so I've had some here and then sort of just keep on building this in keep make sure there's uh, some like change of colour so it's not all one colour don't overdo it so like add one red in but then don't go and suddenly start adding like 20 snow trees in the world for absolutely no reason and also try and keep them fairly like similar so you stick with mostly greens not keeping on changing it to different colours so now once you've done this you can uh, go into the final touches if you want so these are sort of like the just adding the grass and then deleting all the trees so if you go into madness mode and then go into like placing trees you'll see that when you place trees both trees and grass come up and then you can go back into um, place mode and then manually delete all the trees and list now as grass in your world you might decide to keep like one tree up just to keep on like adding the atmosphere but delete most of the trees there and then you also have like grass growing around your world making it more realistic also if you want to do some final touches on the source of like landscape go and add tiny little pieces in the world which you will barely notice say for instance this block here and then we'll really smooth it down so it's barely even recognisable so you wouldn't like a normal player wouldn't actually notice this but as the really fine detail which you really are looking for in these final stages of building your map so once you've gone and detailed out the world then you are pretty much finished so say for instance uh, like let's go and play this uh, map now let's go and just put uh, sort of like you'll be a normal character in here we'll put a bard up against us so we can go and like wander around so now if you go and like look in here you can see all the like different stuff going around here it feels quite realistic like seeing all the grass and all of the different sorts of um, stones which really adds uh, like to the effect because if you didn't have any like sort of effects going on it'd be like you'd really notice it if there weren't any rocks or any grass or anything so anyway i hope you enjoyed today's video remember to like and subscribe and i will see you in the next video bye